this is my little take on, on door details. Uh, for a long time, I've actually kept a set of details that I found to be quite useful. Um, but I think the presentation that I'm going to give you today is to do with how doors are made up and why I put things together in a certain way. Now, I know that in Vectorworks, we've got quite a useful tool to do um, door details with. Um, but I find that I can do a lot more with my little detail set that I use in my library. And this is where it came from. Um, it's a set of details that I drew a long time ago. And over the years, I've added little bits and pieces to it. But the fundamental principles have never changed. That is, I've got a 32 millimeter thick door frame and a door, um, a door stop and an architrave either side. In certain cases, I've put sound stops in with the use of mastic. Now, you know I don't like mastic, but in this particular case, if done correctly, um, it's a useful tool in terms of keeping airborne sound from going across the structure. So together with all those basic ingredients, I can build any door. Now, what I did was I made um, a set of um, grouped objects that I used to um, pull a door together. So I've got my 32 thick frame and a frame with a, de with a rebate on it to take um, a sleeved um, expansion piece in, my architraves and my standard door detail, but also a packer piece. Now I find that using a packer piece is extremely useful in making a door fit properly, allowing the door framer to put the door in without having to squeeze and poke it and shove it in. With this he's got a nice 7mm gap either side of the frame so that he can put it in, pack it out and fix it according to my details. I've also got a set of screw details. Now these have come from all over the place. I can't even remember where I got some of these from. But they are useful when I'm doing my details because I like to show exactly where I've got screws. Now in a double plasterboard layer like this one, I'm showing that the first layer should be fixed independent of the second layer. Now that's useful in a fire situation and often in the regs it's required. Also, I like to show exactly where I can fix through into whatever structure is there. Now in this particular case it's, um, it's a 90C stud. So I fix it through there with a hidden detail with the doorstop covering it over. Um, and that's the basic detail that I that I use and it works well for me for anything from um, say a hundred block wall all the way through to double studs um, to single studs with quilt without quilt whatever you like and the basic rule is that um, I draw the detail out and make it work and as my framing goes when I do a framing drawing I like to show the overall structural opening and I work this out so basically I've got seven millimeters for my packer 32 millimeters for my frame or whatever you want to use but 32 works for me then I've got um, three millimeter gap between the frame and the door now in the UK um, we have a series of metric door sizes and I call them the two sixes so 726 826 926 and perhaps a 626 um, and I put that across and I do exactly the same detail over the other side now in the terms of fixings, I then I've got one layer on a 90C stud. And I've also indicated that I want the architrave pinned to the door frame itself. I want that to ride in that particular area there because I know expansion and contraction will cause cracking unless I leave it alone and I let the door ride. I've also shown two fixings on the doorstop. Um, and in certain cases, I've got in an intermeshant strip, perhaps with a door seal as well. You get them integrated these days. And most important, I'm going to show that I want a fixing through the actual door frame into the stud. Now that is a classic detail. Now in this particular case, um, this door frame with an 826 door means I've got a structural opening of 910. Exactly what the block manufacturer or the block fixer or the stud fixer wants to see. Now what I do is I also I create a library in my drawing and I put the basics of these into that library um, so that I've got it all sorted out. But if I want to, I've also got these in a separate folder as separate elements within my library. 
So I can just drag them out and put them in. So that's how I record and use my door detailing. Now, I've just put these onto a separate drawing sheet so I could just show you what I've got. But I've also got them onto my famed Steve's Bits. Now, as you can see, if I drop this down, I've got loads of different details that I've collected over the years from various sources. But I've also got on this all my door elevations. Now, my door elevations give me a lot of information. Fixings for hinges, push and pull plates, skirting boards, kicker plates, all sorts of information that I've put on there that I want absolutely correctly done so it, it complies with the law to be honest building regulations and each one of them is separate I've also got um, a pair and a half sorry uh, a, a, a solid door width and a half a width I've got single widths with the windows correctly put in maybe I've got um, these sort of things I've only used those once um, but I had to draw it so I kept it and so I've got all sorts of different um, details that I've, I've kept over the years. But they all have information and they're all kept in my little library. And as you can see, there's some more details. That's where the original details came from. And um, I just keep them there ready for uh, one day when I need them. Um, more details over here for different other styles that I've used and kept in the past. Um, they're very useful. And what are these? Oh, these are other details that I drew. Again, based on the same principles, using everything, but with a, perhaps a different um, stance on things. So, there you go. There's my views on door frames. Um, use it correctly. Think about how the door is going to open and shut. Always include that 3mm gap for, for tolerance. And always use a packer piece. It'll allow the framer to put it in properly without having to squeeze and shove and push. So that's it. Hope you're well. Bye.